In this video we deal with the origin of the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin temperature scales. So let's get started. In everyday life, temperature is often understood as a quantity that expresses the property of a substance to be hot or cold. In fact, however, such a perception of hot or cold depends on various factors. Among other things, it depends on the thermal conductivity of the substance. For example, metal feels much cooler than wood at low temperatures due to its higher thermal conductivity, although both have the same temperature. On the other hand, the human perception of temperature depends on the prehistory of our skin with which we touch objects. For example, if we hold a hand in ice water and then put it in a pot of warm water, it feels much hotter than if we hold an uncooled hand in the pot with warm water. Defining the temperature of a substance by the human sensation of being hot or cold therefore fails. For the determination of the temperature one uses therefore a different connection, which is directly related to the temperature, the motion of the particles in a substance. The temperature of a substance is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles contained in it. This kinetic energy is also noticeable in the thermal expansion of substances. At high temperatures, the molecules are very strongly in motion and thus occupy a larger space. In liquid in glass thermometers exactly this principle of thermal expansion is used to determine the temperature. A so-called thermometric liquid in a glass tube, also called capillary tube, expands when heated and contracts when cooled. A calibrated scale can then be used to read off the respective temperature that led to the corresponding thermal expansion. Depending on which reference points are used to determine the scale, and thus to measure the temperature, there are three main temperature scales. The Celsius scale, the Fahrenheit scale, and the Kelvin scale. These different temperature scales are described in more detail in the following. In many countries it is common to measure the temperature of substances by means of the so-called Celsius scale. When the Swedish astronomer Anders Celsius defined the Celsius scale at the time, two reference points were used. One is the melting point of water and the other is the boiling point of water. Both at an ambient pressure of one bar. To calibrate such a Celsius scale, the glass tube filled with liquid, in the past usually mercury, was first placed in melting water. This melting point of the water was arbitrarily defined as a value of zero. The water was then heated to the boiling point. This boiling point of the water was arbitrarily assigned the value 100. All other temperature values can be obtained by interpolating or extrapolating this basic scale. The temperature values as they are obtained on the Celsius scale are indicated with the unit degrees Celsius or centigrade. The German physicist Daniel Fahrenheit wanted to avoid negative temperature values on a temperature scale for everyday life. He therefore developed the Fahrenheit scale. For this purpose, he thought in the 17th century, far before Celsius, about the lowest possible temperature that he could produce in the laboratory without technical aids. He experimented with a cooling bath of water, ice, and ammonium chloride and was able to produce a minimum temperature of minus 17.8 degrees Celsius. He used this temperature to determine the zero point of his Fahrenheit scale. As a further reference point, Fahrenheit used the human body temperature of 37.8 degrees Celsius and assigned the value 100 degrees Fahrenheit to it. The decisive disadvantage of the Fahrenheit scale was that the reference point defined by body temperature is not exactly reproducible. Everyone has a different body temperature depending on their daily form and physical activity. For this reason, other reference points are used for today's definition of the Fahrenheit scale, namely the freezing point of water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and the boiling point of water at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, there are 180 subdivisions, called degrees, between these reference points and not 100 subdivisions as in the Celsius scale. If the temperature in the Celsius scale changes by 1 degree, the temperature value in the Fahrenheit scale changes by 1.8 degrees. In addition, for the temperature value, the shift of the zero point for the freezing point of water must be taken into account, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, to convert a temperature value from the Celsius scale to the Fahrenheit scale, the given formula applies. Conversely, the following formula applies to the conversion of a given temperature in the unit degree Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. The Celsius scale, and also the Fahrenheit scale, 
are not very scientific due to the arbitrary determination of the reference points. Rather, a physically meaningful temperature scale should take into account the fact that temperature is a measure of the magnitude of the movement of the molecules. The temperature at which the molecules no longer have any kinetic energy and are therefore completely at rest should be used as the zero point for a physically meaningful temperature scale. Such an absolute zero point is used for the so-called Kelvin scale. The temperature at which the particles of a substance no longer have any motion is defined as the zero point. This temperature therefore represents the lowest possible temperature and is therefore referred to as absolute zero. On the Celsius scale absolute zero is at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius or at minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit on the Fahrenheit scale and henceforth serves as the reference point for the Kelvin scale. Absolute zero is therefore designated as zero Kelvin. Like the Celsius scale, the Kelvin scale is divided into a total of 100 subdivisions between the melting point of water, which is 273 Kelvin, and boiling point of water, which is 373 Kelvin. The Kelvin scale is merely a shifted Celsius scale, with a scientifically determined zero point that equals to the standstill of the particles contained in a substance. For the conversions of a temperature value from the Celsius scale to the temperature value of the Kelvin scale, and vice versa, the following formulas apply. For the conversion of a temperature on the Fahrenheit scale to the temperature on the Kelvin scale, and vice versa, the following formulas apply. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.